call the ordinance committee meeting to order. Oh, I'd like to open the public hearing to, are there any speakers? With no speakers, I'd like to close the public hearing portion of this meeting. And I think I'd like to stand from the Pledge of Allegiance. Agenda item number one, do I hear a motion for the proposed ordinance for water pollution control authority? Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'd like to uh, get a motion for the approval of the minutes. Ms. Uh, Stancho, I'd like to move uh, approval of minutes of public hearing regular scheduled meeting of November 27th. Second. Second, thank you. Um, item number three, unfinished, all in favor? No, any, any questions? Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, we will move to any unfinished business. Nothing on there. Unfinished. Is there any unfinished business? No items on the table, no Madam items Chairman. On the table. So we'll move on to new business. Can I get a motion on the revised fees for the Office of Planning and Zoning? So moved. Moved by Council Councilman Connor. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I would just ask the attorney to make, I'm still not co completely clear, if you could talk about this a little bit. Yes. Um, by state statute, municipalities are allowed to charge fees for applications that come into land use boards. <clears throat> Those fees are necessary and um, are varied depending on the type of application that's made because every application requires some work on the part of municipal staff. Um, now, the 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 la and, and the statute that allows us to do that says that the um, municipality by ordinance can, can um, charge fees. <clears throat> so the most recent uh, fee, uh, uh, application fee, that triggered what you see in front of you is the uh, uh, applications for affordable housing um, uh, projects under Section 8-30G of the Connecticut General Statutes. For a while, we were using um, the, the fees for special case applications um, as the fee structure for affordable housing. Um, I, I think we were, I think that that was okay, I think that it was valid, but some of the applicants began complaining that um, this wasn't valid. And we're threatening not to pay those fees. So the Zoning Commission looked at it and, and um, basically felt that there's such a tremendous amount of work that goes into these 8-30G applications from um, all, uh, the whole spectrum of town employees, police, fire, conservation, engineering, et cetera, et cetera, um, that um, we needed a, a fee particularly uh, specific to affordable housing. And so they discussed it, they approved one, and they passed it over to you for a favorable recommendation. So what you are approving, if you approve this and forward it back to the council for uh, um, approval as an ordinance is the fee schedule, which in now includes the new 8-30G application fee. The rest of the fees are all the same, the, the same as they've been for n numerous years. They haven't been touched, 
but the 8-30G application fee has been added. Thank you. Excuse me. Is there any further questions? Madam Chair, question to the lawyer. Did the fee change? Oh, that, that's the new fee that you're saying that we'll be doing. Yeah, the, the rest of the fee schedule, Wally, is the same as it's been for numerous years. I'm not sure how many. Many years. Um, but the new fee that was added was specifically for affordable housing, 8-30G application. Thank you very much for clarification. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Hearing no further discussion, I'd like to make a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. And so that will be referred over to the council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. I'd like to move on to the amendment to Chapter 161, Property Maintenance Article on the Anti-Blight Program. Would anybody like to make a motion? Ms. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that the definition of blight informant officer in Section 161-2 of the Town Code be amended as follows. The position is established within the town. The blight, blight enforcement officer shall serve as assigned by the mayor. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? I have, I just, uh, unless you have, I just want to point out one thing. I think the, uh, as it appears, I think there's a, a typo. I think, and we'll check this out before you pass it at the council level, but I think it should read the position that is established within the town. Uh, the blight enforcement officer shall serve as assigned by the mayor. I think that the word that is missing from, from the present language of the ordinance. We'll take a look at that. Okay. Thank you. And, and Any further discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Can you also elaborate on this? Um. Uh, are you talking to me, Wally? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, elaborate on it. Well, as you know, there was a question that arose uh, during the last council. Um, the, the, the mayor um, unilaterally uh, transferred the blight officer uh, to the health department. And that um, um, engendered some controversy because some members of the council felt that the or there was an ordinance that, uh, that placed that position specifically within the zoning department. The town attorney's office looked at it and said, well, yeah, that's true, but that ordinance is not mutually exclusive with the charter powers of the mayor, which give the mayor far-reaching, wide-ranging powers over the administration and supervision of town personnel. And so to avoid um, a potential problem within the zoning department because of, 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 of the, um, the positions involved, the mayor used his charter power to move that position into the, um, into the health department. What you have before you is a, an attempt to now further refine that ordinance to say that um, the position is one that the mayor will have the ability or the authority to assign to whatever department seems to fit that best. Um, I don't know how the original ordinance was drafted. It really never fit the, the um, zoning department, you know, the duties of the blight officer, always fit more in tune with uh, the health department or even economic development because a lot of the properties that were blighted were, were properties, were foreclosed properties that had been taken over by on tax foreclosures and things like that. Uh, never really seemed to fit well in zoning to begin with. But the, the purpose here is to give, while the town attorney's office uh, is of the opinion that the mayor had this power anyhow because of the charter, this alleviates any confusion because of an ordinance which seems to specifically put the position within the zoning department. Thank you, Attorney Flirt. Is there any further discussion? Yeah. Compliment, Pam. Thank you. Um, 
I had a few words to say regarding this at our last council meeting, and I'll be brief. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Florick did say that the mayor's authority uh, granted him the ability to move this position even despite there was an ordinance that said it belonged in zoning. Um, my issue was the mayor's first duty is to uphold all ordinances. And then there are some more nebulous duties, 15 specifically, that say, oh, and they can also do this, and they can do this as they see fit. But when something explicit, such as must uphold all ordinances, um, can be, we can do an end run around it because we're looking for some nebulous way to circumvent uh, what the charter and the code says. You know, two mayors approved this, two councils approved this, and I hate to use the word disingenuous, but it comes to mind quickly. To say that it never really fit in zoning uh, goes against what 20 other councilors voted on and two other mayors voted on, that zoning was where it belonged. So I just wanted to just emphasize that I, all of our decisions should be within the code. The code was created by our predecessors for a reason, the charter also, and let's just be cognizant that we do things in the right order. Um, the council had eight months to change this ordinance prior to the decision to move the position out of zoning, and that's when it should have been done. Um, so I just wanted to emphasize that point, and thank you for listening. Madam, Madam Chairman, I'd just like to take a little different opinion. I, I, I support the attorneys, and again, I have 25-year background in HR, but when you have you have a, a senior executive, chief executive officer, they need leeway in hiring. Now, there are exceptions like union contracts and things, but this was an at-will position, so it really was in the preview of where the mayor wanted to put the position. Um, they exercise, and I, I always say they're, they're running $210 million in 1,000 people. They should be able to maneuver, move people within reason, and this was under his or her discretion. In this case, it was John Harkins, but it was uh, also um, continued by uh, uh, Mayor Hoydick. So I think, I think this thing is just correcting a whole. I, I, I agree with uh, Councilman Cann that we have to be careful we enforce ordinance, but I also think that priorities come into place, and sometimes you have to make a decision. So I do think the mayor's made the right decision, and I'm going to support this. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, are we ready for a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And again, Madam Chairman, that motion is to is to refer it over to Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. <coughs> Can I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'd like to call the uh, WPCA Water Pollution Control Authority meeting to order at 721, January 22nd, 2018. Uh, do I have an approval for the minutes? Here. Second, uh, from my Mr. Kadeem, Councilman Kadeem. Do I have a second? I second. Second by you. Councilor Tiki. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh. Motion passes. Uh, next up, we have a report by Mr. John Casey, town engineer. So I um, had sent out a, a memo in, in advance. I think you all have that. Um, item one is actually item three on the, uh, item five on the agenda. So uh, I'll bypass that. Um, the item two is the, the sewer lining project. That's a project that we have to install a liner inside of the existing sanitary sewer pipes to extend their life. And um, we have completed most of the work that we had planned. And the way we structure a lot of these projects is try to put them in, um, done in coordination with other projects that are being done on the street. So like Barnum Avenue down by McDonald's, we did the, the streetscape project. So we also lined the sewers there as part of this project. Um, there's a couple other projects that 
have, are, are ongoing that we thought maybe we should line some sewers there as well. And one is on King Street from Barnum Avenue down to California Street. Um, the high school is being built there. They're doing a lot of utility work in the street. Um, and then they're actually bridging over the street to connect two buildings together. Um, so we thought that we might want to put a liner in that sanitary sewer to um, extend life so we, we don't, wouldn't have a need to go back in and, and dig it up once that other project is done. Um, in addition, the state of Connecticut is doing um, intersection work at Barnum Avenue at King Street and Nichols Ave. And again, we thought that most of Barnum Avenue is now done, but this piece is not. So we might want to also line the sewers um, in coordination with that project so we don't have to go in and repair any sewers at that point either. Um, the council had, the WPCA had approved uh, funding for the lining project as a whole for 995,000. Bids came in very, very good. So we were able to, um, we have a balance in the amount of funding that's available. Um, and the work that we would envision is approximately $75,000 to, um, to do the work on King Street and Barnum Ave that I just discussed. So if you are interested in doing that, we could um, add that work to the um, contractor's project and, ha and he's willing to, to hold his prices and do that work um, this spring. So that'd be about $75,000 worth of work would come out of the existing funding that the WCA already approved for the lining project. When would you need to have an answer on that by? Um, so I would say at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, so you can gear up and, and do the work in April maybe. That's fair. The um, six pump stations rehabilitation project um, is uh, a large project to renovate six of our 12 pump stations. Um, and the consultant is Ty and Bond and they've been working on that project for about a good eight months now. Um, and they're working on developing the plans and they're about, soon they'll be about 60% complete. Um, that project is proposed to be funded by Clean Water Fund loan from the state. Um, that loan is a 2% loan and it's available in $4 million increments. So we propose to bid out the project in the six pump station project in, in three pieces so that we would have a, each project would be less than $4 million and would qualify for the Clean Water Fund loan funding for each, each project, which would total six total. Um, so there's nothing, no decisions to be made. We're, we're probably, the design is ongoing on that. Um, I should say that the Clean Water Fund application for that has not been completed yet. The state's aware of what we're doing. They've approved the design fee, um, but they don't want us to apply for the funding until we're ready to bid the first project. And in order to qualify for that funding, um, we need to, there will be a series of things that the WPCA will have to decide. Uh, there'll be a, a resolution for the mayor to sign will be one. And another will be to be secure the 2% loan that the state is going to give us. We would have to authorize the bonding for the project. So at some point we'd be looking, you know, finance director would be putting together a bond ordinance for um, probably the town council is what, what we've done in the past. Town council would approve the bond ordinance and that would secure the, the loan that we would take from the state. Um, in advance of doing the six pump station projects, there were some immediate needs at Pex Mill Pond, so we actually did a safety improvement project there. That was to improve the odor control, the ventilation, railings, and grading. Um, and that project is mostly complete. There's a little work to be done. Um, the project came in um, under budget, so when it is done, we'll report that it's complete, and then that project will be done. And lastly, um, we have a proposed project to do coastal resiliency um, around the treatment plant. There's a, already a hurricane dike that surrounds the plant. Um, it was built in 1970-ish, early 1970s. 
and that um, the predictions and the calculations of the predicted sea um, flood elevations were changed in 2013. And may, anybody who lives in the flood zone knows that the, the flood elevations um, that they base the insurance on has, has risen about two feet in the south end of town. Um, and of course the plant is also there and the dike is no longer providing what we had anticipated in 1970 as the um, level of protection. Um, so we can go into this project in much more detail about what was proposed, but basically we were proposing to extend the existing dike with, with flood walls, and then we would provide access points within the flood walls. Um, we did, the WPCA did approve some preliminary design funding for that, but we held off because we've applied for a federal grant. Um, and if we should get the federal grant from FEMA, um, that would fund approximately 36% of the project, so then the town would would be on the hook for 64%. Um, so at this point, we're just we're just waiting on that until we um, hear about the grant. Uh, Mr. Casey, any any idea when we would hear back on that grant? Um, I'm told three to six months. Okay, thank you. Another question for you, sir. Approximately how uh, high would those walls be if constructed? Um, I think they're between three to six feet. So at some point out near the river, that dike is, the current dike is already pretty high. So I think it comes up about three feet there. And then around the back where it's, where it's low, it comes up about five or six feet. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Gacy? Uh, Councilman Kahn. Thank you, Chairman. Um, John, thank you for your uh, work in coordinating all these activities. The ongoing work, um, for example, with the, the lining, in addition to the planning of these big projects. And I was thinking of a project plan, a timeline. Um, say the pump stations, we need to go through certain steps. Um, is, it, is it appropriate to ask for an ex expectation on what, the, what are the milestones and how long we think it'll take us to get to actual breaking ground or starting of individual pumps? Um, yeah, I, I think we can, I don't have that with me, but we can put together a, you know, a for, more formal timeline of yeah. the proposed project. Just so we can kind of integrate it into our meeting agendas, if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Councilman Gadeen. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, just speaking a little about the flooding that we were dealing with off the exit, I think it was 30 when you're coming north off, of, off the highway, which puts you by the cemetery. You have flooding underneath the highway there, and we were talking about the retainer wall that we already built, but it was supposed to go back and do more work over there. How's that going, and when is that going to proceed? Um, that is, um, that project would be done in association with the bridge project. So that's not necessarily a WPCA project. That would be something we'll be talking about at the Public Works Committee. Um, but that project is, uh, we're getting ready to submit the DP permits for that project. Thank and you very much for the update. Thank I you. I can update further on it. Appreciate it. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Casey? Hearing none. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the update. Um, next, I'd like to call on Mr. Tom Hyde, Plant Superintendent, to give his update. Good evening. Uh, I believe you all have a copy of uh, my memo, the five items that we have up. First one being the uh, monthly reports, which would be attached. Um, reports basically cover uh, November and December, as we did not have a December meeting. So I, I put the two of them in. There are uh, basically everything is running well the exclusion of two noteworthy points. One is towards the head of it, the operating, re right just, just below operating report. Um, I've got a comment about our UV system has continued to run in manual mode with modules o operating at 100%. Uh, we've had trouble with our ultraviolet treatment center for disinfection. And it's been going on for months now. We currently have approved the repair. It's a $180,000 job that we're talking about. You'll see it further down on the list here. And it was scheduled 
for tentative completion in January. It has been pushed off till March due to availability of some of the items. Um, the other item worth noting is that on the uh, December, down the bottom of the page, anything that's bold and underlined is uh, out of compliance with our permit. And the uh, annual daily limit of nitrogen is 356 pounds per day. And for the month of December, we put out 415. Uh, what that was regarding is that um, we had an internal recycle pump directly related to the nitrogen denitrification, actually, um, that failed. It took us several weeks to get it rebuilt and replaced, and it has been rebuilt and replaced at this point. And we are back running down, and the, um, as of last week, we're running about 198 pounds per day, so we're back within. And the uh, rolling average for the year completed at 305 pounds per day for the year of 2017, so we came out of that okay. Um, secondly is the UV disinfection system, which I just covered. The, uh, as I said, the purchase order has been issued. The materials are being produced and shipped. We've got uh, probably half of the materials in at this point, but this entails when they when we have acquired everything we're going to have training um, somehow we lost control of maintenance over this area and a full understanding of it we had a large personnel turnover so in this project when all the parts do arrive they're going to be coming in and helping us install them and teach our operators probably half a dozen of us how to maintain this system so that we don't end up in this situation again and as I said, that's scheduled for completion in March 2018. Um, third item, the backup generator emergency repair. We have a uh, large generator that's designed to run our entire plant if the power goes out for a storm or what have you. Simply UI goes down. Um, we had a couple failures with that generator. It's uh, the controls on that generator are set up on the three phase. Uh, back up a little bit and wastewater things are set up with redundancy so that if something fails we have another pump or another tank or another whatever we need to back us up so that we can continue to maintain Mr. Hunt, usually in a system sorry to interrupt you sir apologies um, the the attached reports for November and December do you have copies of those I did not bring copies because I was thinking that they were all distributed you don't all have to I can get them uh, we do, I do I do not that's uh, um, could you email could you email them to uh, absolutely. Carol and we can make copies for for the board here absolutely okay if you don't uh, mind. typically I bring them but I, I that's thought okay. I was ahead of it this time and um, I apologize um, yes I will get them out thank you sir actually I I know we're having a personnel change I believe they, they are already out um, this should already be in the system, but I will make sure that it's thank you. I appreciate that that you receive that uh, On that generator repair it turns out that the generator had failed sometime in the past uh, the control system had failed and it um, Simply switched over to the second system somebody turned the alarm off on the first system when the second system failed somebody turned that off when the third system failed we had to fix it and we discovered during that repair that a generator ran for an extended period of time that we had some coolant leaks. So we had to shut that generator down for a week. So we brought in a series of backup generators to uh, support the plant if we had a power outage because our plant has to continue to run regardless of weather and so forth. Um, that was completed December 9th by Northeast Generator out of Bridgeport. Third and five, uh, fourth item, the third and final effluent pump rebuilt, approximately $80,000 per pump, is uh, scheduled for installation in February. Um, about, we had a wobbling pump for the last 10 years, and about a month before my predecessor left, a second pump failed. We have three of them. Um, at times, we need to run two at a time. Uh, we were down a couple of pumps. These were um, 
as it says, $80,000 rebuilds, and we're in the last leg right now. We've got two rebuilt pumps in there. We've got the final one going in next month. And the last item was a, a safety working platform. Safety is safety related. A working platform required for maintenance repairs on our bar racks. Where material first comes into our facility, we try to rake all the rags and leaves and any debris that gets into the system out. And um, sometimes those systems need maintenance and there's not a safe way to get access into them right now. So we're working on that. That was set on hold for, um, uh, we didn't believe we had the budget fund available for it at the time. It's not a huge dollar item, but there was a question regarding um, whether I in fact have an intact budget at this time. Um, attorney Floor, uh, regarding Mr. Hyde's question, um, about the budget, if you wouldn't mind comment, sir. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know the answer to the question, but we certainly can look at it. I, I, I um, a little bit at a loss because I don't normally cover WPCA, so I'm, I'm not quite sure what the last WPCA um, uh, panel did um, and how that fits within the town budget that was passed within the past couple of weeks. So why don't you let us look at that uh, and, and uh, consult with um, uh, uh, Jay Wahlberg and, and uh, we'll look at the budgets and, and uh, we'll come back to you with an answer for next time. Thank you. Mr. Hyde, anything? I believe I'm all set on the questions. Okay, excellent. Um, any questions for uh, Mr. Hyde? Councilman uh, Kadeem. Thank you very much, Chair. In the previous meetings, we spoke about a railing, of a public safety issue or a safety issue that was inside the plant. You were saying one of the, one of the canopies or walkways needed to be um, fixed or repaired. Was that taken care of by building needs or was that done at all? We have several safety items that we had been working on. Um, some of them have been completed anywhere from replacing fire extinguishers, were date, they, which were dated back in 2006, to uh, safety rails. One of the things we've discovered, um, oh, we had a couple of large uh, multi hundred thousand dollar safety items that installing safety rails and so forth and one of the things we discovered that if people were operating the equipment properly they would not belong in those areas therefore safety rails are not required so several of them have been reduced through procedural uh, re-implementation if you will so at this time the plant is safe that's the question also because what happens is so many months ago because of what was going on, i believe with the budget so it's no fault of you guys own um, but just just to have an understanding that regardless to that occurring we still needed to be safe so our workers don't get hurt or possibly lose their life from falling off of something that can be um very dangerous so i, I want to know is everything okay now or is there something that needs to be done immediately does the council need to be informed of passing a particular um, budget items so that he can get it done because safety is always very important. I will always be bringing additional safety issues to hand. That's part of my job. No, I, I, so no, safety is not done. Are our operators generally safe? Yes, absolutely. Is there more to be done? There will always be more to be done. I understand that, but I'm saying I'm speaking from being here for two years, and there was a situation we spoke about quite a few times about the railings not being safe or rotting or something needed to change. And was that ever addressed or fixed? As I previously stated, um, the lar a large portion of that was a matter of not following procedures, operators in areas where they did not belong. We've eliminated the operators in those areas. Therefore, we do not need safety rails because the operators did not belong there. 
They simply needed to be taught on how to operate the equipment properly. I understand what you just said, but I'm, I'm still not hearing the answer that I'm asked. I asked, like, was any railings that are there that needed to be repaired, were they repaired? And if they were removed, please tell me that they were removed so we didn't need them anymore. But if there's a railing that needs to be repaired, I pray that we can get that done. Because I hate to be the worker that goes there and fall and get hurt and not be happy about that situation and can't go home to my family. So I really want to understand if it's possible to answer that question about particular railings that were damaged or needed to be repaired from wear or wore out or what have you. I just want to know. Just a straight answer, please. Which particular railing are you referring to? I can't, I can't call that because you know what's in the plant and I don't. But I know you brought it to our attention that the railing needed to be repaired. I cannot swear at this time that every railing has been replaced. That was on my original list. As I said, some of them simply do not need to be there because it was a misunderstanding. Some of them have been replaced. New things have been brought to our attention. Safety is an ongoing process. Is it possible we can possibly get an update of what railings that does need to replace and what was replaced so we know what's going on? Is yes. that possible? Yes. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. Any other questions for Mr. Hyde? Um, Problem with yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, in regards to the budget, the WPCA passed a budget a couple of months, you know, like say during the summer, many months before the towns, before we pass the final budget, there's a few hundred thousand dollar discrepancy between the two. But I think Mr. Wahlberg um, with Mr. Florick and Mr. Hyde will be able to reconcile it and get him the funds he needs um, expeditiously. Uh, my time on the town council was started around the same time that Mr. Hyde started his work as our senior plan operator. I can. I'm not sure that's your exact title, but when he started, many incidents of not just delayed maintenance, but avoided maintenance um, were being identified. We've heard about the railings, um, incidences of uh, no supervision, people not being trained, people operating inappropriately. Um, and for the past year plus, Mr. Hyde and his team have really stepped up to retrain the staff, to identify the risk areas, to mitigate the risks, and we'd much rather spend $10,000 to change the oil in a pump than $80,000 to rebuild the pump. And this is the level of oversight he's brought, and, and it's something that, that due diligence and that constant oversight I'm grateful for, and that's the way we should take care of our equipment. Um, so let's maintain the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kahn. Any other questions for Mr. Hyde? Councilman Connor, do you have anything? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like on item five, make a res resolution on a clean water fund. Well, uh, one moment, Mr. Connor. Any, any other questions just for Mr. Hyde before I move Sorry. on? I apologize. I'd like to get ahead of it. That's all right. Um, I, Mr. Casey, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I just wanted to say the resolution that is in my memo is the one that you should prove. That's the one that's in the format that the state would like to see. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I just would like, before we move on to the resolution, to thank uh, both the, g the gentlemen here. Um, I got the opportunity to spend some time uh, this past Friday afternoon at the plant, having never been there myself and seen it in work and in progress. Um, I am very confident that you guys are running a very tight, safe ship. Um, I'm looking forward to working with you going forward, and um, thank you for what you do. I just wanted to make, make that known. Okay. Um, Mr. Connor, moving on to uh, resolution. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a resolution. Be it resolved that it is in the best interest of the town of Stratford, Connecticut, to enter into contracts with the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. In furtherance of this resolution, the mayor of the town of Stratford, Laura R. Hoydick, is duly authorized to enter and assign said contracts on behalf of the town of Stratford. The mayor is further authorized to provide such additional information and execute such documents as may be required by the state or federal government in connection with said contracts and execute any amendments, rescissions, and revisions thereto. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Second by Ms. Dancho. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion. to adjourn. 
Second. Mr. O'Brien, second by Mr. Kadeem. Thank you very much.